I lived on the Mill Park in Eastham. Uh, we didn't have a house phone, and of course there was no mobile phones in them days. Um, we didn't have to be at the ground until three quarters of an hour before the game. Uh, everybody had to report, you know, the apprentices. And um, there was a knock on the front door about an hour and a half before the game. And um, somebody said, Tram, your overs have rung the pub my local pub because that is the only place that had a phone and one of the uh, the regulars because a lot of people knew me down there uh, not not through me going in there but <laughs> <laughs> although my mother did work in the in the pub um and they came up and said tram you want you up at the club right away there's an emergency and when i got to the ground i was told that one of the players um Bill Kenny, who I'm allowed to mention him, had had a falling out um, because he'd been cut, named as a sub. So I got a call up um, and I actually went on the pitch. I didn't get on to play, but I went on the pitch to pick up a, a, a stray dog that had gone on the pitch and came off. So I always have that in my head that that was my debut. <laughs> Your actual debut, though, was the crew game, as I say. Can you remember much about it, what, what it was like, just pulling on the shirt for the first time? Um, uh, yeah, yeah, um, I just, I was just hoping that, you know, I wouldn't make a, a hash of things and, uh, it was really, it, it was quite emotional really and, uh, as you come down that tunnel and that was a night game, so the lights were on and, uh, it did take me back to when I was a kid on the terraces, um, but one thing that happened in there, I actually twisted my knee. Um, Dickie Johnson tried to play a short ball out and I had to step into the box um, because a crew player was closing me down and he tackled me and I twisted a knee um, and I had a, ended up having a cartilage operation after that one. But uh, no, I won't forget it. <laughs> well, that will explain why you didn't play again that season then, I imagine. But by this point, Johnny King is manager. Yeah. Um, so Ron Yeats had obviously seen you coming through. He obviously fancied you as a player because he'd, he'd given you the chance to, to be in and around that first team. Was there any worry when he left that that chance might go because there was a new manager? Or was it because Johnny was basically stepping up from assistant? Did you kind of always feel comfortable that you'd still get your opportunity? Yeah, I did. Because uh, when I first actually went to the, to the club, I was a centre forward. Um, and then obviously... Big Roy Lofty Lawrence was um, there as well on the coaching staff, um, Kingy, and they'd obviously discuss things, and then they decided I would be playing as a centre back. So I always had the feeling I was always confident that you know Johnny King would still carry on with my development, um, which he did obviously, because also at the time. Um, before I made my debut, I'd had a call up for the England Youth Trials. Uh, unfortunately, because of the injury, I never got to, to attend them. So everything at that moment was on an upward trajectory. Um, unfortunately, I had to have the operation. and had to wait a bit while to get back in the team again. I don't know what medical science was like then compared to now, but was it an injury that was career limiting or was feared to be career limiting at the time? No, it was a straightforward cartilage, open up and uh, clean it out. Um, but the the problem is they're not, they weren't keyhole surgery then. So it was uh, the old knife and the scar job, but uh, they got the job done. I guess the problem also is the age you were um, at the time. It, it, the, you've got to, you've got to have, almost trust that the manager will, will give you that chance once you get back from injury as opposed to being a player who had 50, 60 plus appearances behind them and the manager already knew that they were going to be a first team player in the future. Yeah, that's right. Um, I wonder did get back in, well, got back into uh, full fitness. It was the, the centre-halves then were uh, Dave Phil Potts and Les Parry, who uh, were two good centre-backs, centre yeah. 